Culture defines us. Even in a foreign country, people feel a little more at home with small celebrations of their own culture. Culture represents language, religion, architecture, tradition, art, and the written word. Today, a few students and faculty members will allow you to explore our culture. My name is Kazan Taylor. I am known as Kazi. I am a sophomore in pursuit of a degree in finance. I'm from the Bahamas, specifically Nassau, New Providence. I'm a global learning and international affair recruitment ambassador, and I will MC today. Our first presenter is Fatin. Fatin is from Burkina Faso. He's working on his doctorate in education and works as a graduate assistant in the Office of Global Learning and International Affairs. In terms of extracurricular activities, he serves committee chair for diversity and equity and inclusion in SGA and is an active member of the African Student Association. Let's welcome Fatin. All right, uh, thank you so much, Kazi, for the uh, introduction. Uh, today, I am going to share with you a short video of uh, you know the masks of Burkina Faso and uh, masks in Burkina Faso are made of leaves and also uh, fibers they uh, usually come out you know under special circumstances uh, at the beginning of the rainy season or uh, during uh, funerals and um, these masks are believed to have you know some supernatural powers and it's only the initiated uh, who are allowed uh, to wear them. And the video I'm going to share uh, uh, was, you know, taken during uh, the Festival de Masque uh, called Festima. It is uh, an event that happened every two years in uh, Burkina Faso. So let's uh, watch the video. All right. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, if you have any questions about the mask of Burkina Faso, please uh, feel free to comment below. Thank you. 
Thank you, Fatine. Our next presenter is Devon. She is majoring in accounting and personal finan financial planning. She's the treasurer of the Alpha Kappa Psi business fraternity. She's a member of the Kentucky CPA. She's a member of the Beta Alpha Psi. She's the secretary of the ASA. And she is originally from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Please welcome her. Hello, everyone. My name is Devine Lekuku. I'm originally from the Congo. I'm a sophomore on the Hill, and today I will be presenting about the Democratic Republic of Congo as well as tourism. To go on, I will give an overview of all facts of the Congo, geography of the region, tourism, national parks, and from there I will come. What is the Democratic Republic of Congo? Well, the Democratic Republic of Congo is the second largest country in Africa. It's the only outlet to the Atlantic Ocean. Its climate is tropical, and it has half of the forest in Africa. The geography of the Congo. The Congo River is the country's main drainage system, and it crosses the equator twice forming an arc. As you can see right here, uh, the Congo part of the 60% of it. The Congo has more than 20 national parks. Several of them have been named in the UNESCO World, World Heritage Center, World Heritage Site. It's bounded in the north by the Central African Republic and the South Sudan, in the east by Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, and Tanzania, and in the southeast by Angola. The Congo is mainly composed of large river basins, major valley, high plateaus, and three mountain ranges. But well, what's exciting about the Congo? Like I mentioned before, the Congo has over 20 national parks. Many of them are very well known, like the Burundi National Park, which is north of Lake Edward in the Burundi mountain ranges. It houses two active volcanoes, the Nia Congo and the Yamura Gira. It also is home to gorillas, golden monkeys, and chimpanzees. From there, we have the Kahamba National Park, which is situated near the South Sudanese border. It houses the important species like the endangered white rhinoceroses. We have the Kahuzi Biego National Park, which is in North Kivu province. It's known for its diverse fauna and for the population of endangered eastern lowland gorillas. This is the only place you can find those species in the whole world. From there, we have the Salongo National Park, which is located in Central River Basin, and it's among the largest tropical rainforest reserves in Africa. As you can see right here, this uh, lifeguard saving a gorilla. From that, we also have the Okapi Wildlife Reserve. This houses the threatened Okapi still living in the world. Other national parks we have are the Maiku, Upembe, and Kundalunga. Except from the national park, we also have very exciting rivers and lakes. Like I mentioned before, the Congo River is the country's main drainage system. Except from that river, we also have many lakes like Lake Kivu, pictures on the left. We also have Lake Maindombe, Lake Tanganyika, which houses the jellyfish. And we have Lake Mweru and Lake Edward. From lakes and cities, from lakes, we also have some very exciting cities people can visit as well. We have the city of Goma pictured here. On the left, you can see the picture. You can see the city at night, and then on the right is the city during the day. This city is known as a tourist city. This is where many people go to visit and get a little warm about the country. This is the city of Lubumbashi. This city is the industrial city. It's where many of the natural resources are found. And from there, we have the city of Kinshasa, which is the capital of the country. It's um, home to many administrative offices and many um, cultural resources.
Like I mentioned before, we have many volcanoes, but the two active I mentioned before, you can see them pictures right here. Thank you. And if you have any questions, you can put them in the comment below. All right. Thank you so much. Um, again, my name is Alinot Malebo. I'm originally from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And uh, today we we're going to talk about minerals in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, first of all, I'm going to share about the topography of the Congo. The country's topographical feature includes huge river basin, major valley, uh, three mountain ranges and high plateaus. Uh, it also has a huge um, rolling area with an average elevation of about 1700 above sea level. Product and resources in DRC. Congolese's primary resources um, are mining, agriculture, and trade. Go to the next slide. Um, much mining work has been done on a small system um, called Artisino Mining Operation. The Democratic Republic of Congo is one of the leading suppliers of gold on titanium, diamond, cobalt, copper, and tin. It is estimated that 24 million untrapped minerals, including the world's considerable asset of coltan and um, lithium. Um, in 2017, it was recorded that the country's product export to different destinations, in which 45.6% of it goes to European Union, 28.2% to China, 21.3% to South Africa, while 4.9% goes to other parts of the world. Congo also exports crude oil to the world in which they recorded its the highest export of coal oil at 309.359 barrels a day. And that was in December, 2019. Um, that record increased from the preview number of 307.110 barrels a day in December, 20, 2018. Um, some of us may have the desire to get gold, but we don't even know some of our necklaces or rings are initially from Congo. Diamond is one of the, har the hardest substance in the world and very expensive, but Congo has its all. Apart from it being very, being very common, being used um, commonly in jewelry pieces, it is also used to make knives, that make our life easier when we are cutting something. Uh, copper is very overflowing and very cheap compared to gold. It, it is used to make um, it is used to make our it is used to make um, um, to make power wires that are commonly used uh, worldwide. We also have lithium is the main components to make various types of batteries that are commonly used, um, used to power up our mobile devices. Uh, now we're going to talk about some of the mining company in the DRC Congo. Um, Kibali, Kibali mining in DRC Congo 
is located in northeast of Kisangani region. Um, it is it is it has an annual production of eight hundred fourteen thousand ounces in financial year of twenty nineteen. Uh, we also have Jecamine, which is La Générale de Carrière de Mine, that is in French. Um, it is another mining company. Its mineral production includes copper and cobalt. Uh, it is plot. It produces about 36,000 tons of copper and uh, 1,500 of cobalt. That was in, 28, in 2020. And its project is operated in uh, in uh, in Kitangana region, and it is it is of it, its office is registered in Lubumbashi, and that is the seal of Lubumbashi, as you can see. So that is the end of my presentation. Again, if you have any question, please feel free to put that in the comment section below. Thank you. Thank you, Zavine and Alanoti. Our next presenter is Coco Christian. He is from the Democratic Republic of Congo. He's pursuing the Master Program of Applied Economics. He is a global learning ambassador and the president of the African Student Association. Please welcome him. Hi, everyone. I'm super excited to share about two rival dressing style of Congolese that became cultural heritage. Today, I'm gonna talk about the Aba Coast and Lassa. In 1965, when Joseph Desiree Mobutu became the second president of the Democratic Republic of Congo, he introduced his, he advocated for his doctrine of, of uh, national authenticity based on a traditional Bantu value to replace tribalism and colonialism. He changed the name of the country to Zaire. He officially changed his name of Joseph Desiree Mobutu to Mobutu Seseseko Kukungwendu Wazabanga, which means the all uh, conquering warrior who goes from triumph to triumph. He abolished Christian names. He abolished Christian names and uh, children who were born during that period were given uh, Zairean names. For example, the former NBA player was given the name of Dikembe Mutombo Polondo Mukamba wa Mutombo. He, out, he outlawed he outlawed the accidental suit worn with tie and shirt, and uh, he introduced the abacost, which was worn without tie and shirt, and he made it the official national clothing. The abacost is, is an abbreviation of a French blending, as of a, of a blending French, which means which literally means down with a suit. Abacost became a distinctive clothes that uh, men started wearing in Zaire. The abacos looked like uh, the Mao suit of China. It was made in long and short sleeves. The abacos has influenced African and Western clothing. And, uh, Today, the Abacos is part of the cultural heritage of Congo. On this picture, you can see the presidents, the two presidents of uh, Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo, and Congo Brazzaville, wearing the Abacos. The next one is La Sap. In 1970, when to, to boycott the, the, the regime of Mobutu, which was becoming totalitarian, young men started wearing even more outlanding occidental suits, uh, accessorying with uh, bow tie, uh, wingtips, and uh, fedoras. 
And uh, this LASAP was advocated by Papa Wemba, who was a who was a who was a music who was a Congolese mu musician, but emphasized he emphasized the importance of a smartly dressed Congolese man. LASAP is a French slang, which means the society of influencers and elegant persons. LASAP means dress up. And it is a subculture in a, found in a, the two capital cities of, of uh, Congo, Kinshasa, and uh, Brazzaville. This movement embodies the elegance in style and uh, man and manners of uh, former of, uh, of colonial predecessors dandies. These are the principle of the sapere. They, they sapper, they are practitioners of, of la sap. These are the three principles to become a sapper. A true sapper should invest, should invest in designer items. A true sapper should, should wear no more than three colors at once. And most importantly, always behave as a gentleman. The key here is visibility. In Congo, a large percentage of uh, young men and, and old men have become zealots of this uh, movement. They spend their meager salaries uh, and wages extra extravagantly to acquire the latest fashion of Europe. LASAP has, has influenced Africans and uh, Western uh, clothing. And uh, LASAP is also, LASAP and uh, the Abacost are both uh, recognized as the Congolese uh, cultural heritage. And uh, they are exhibited uh, during uh, craft and uh, fashion events. They appear featured in, uh, they featured in a uh, no less songs, song uh, uh, Losing You. And also it was a team of a, of, a, of a French rapper music called Sape Comme Jamais. Thank you. Let me know if you have any question. Put it in the comment, so in, in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer it. Thank you so much, Christian, for your presentation. Our next presenter is Augustine. Augustine Youssef is a Nigerian who is pursuing his master's degree in chemistry. He is a graduate research and teaching assistant with the Department of Chemistry. He also is a member of the executive team of the African Students' Union and the host of the Flight Plan podcast. Please welcome Augustine. Thank you, Kavi, and thank you everyone for joining us. I will be uh, presenting a short uh, uh, bio on Nigeria, and I have titled my presentation, Nigeria, a nation at the heart of Africa. Nigeria is, is bordered to the north by Niger Republic and to the south by the Atlantic Ocean. It is also flanked on the east by Benin Republic and on the west by Cameroon. Um, Nigeria, the nation, was born in 1914 when the northern and the southern protectorates were amalgamated by the then British colonial masters. In 1960, Nigeria gained her independence and ever since has been under independent rule. In 1999, Nigeria uh, got back into the Fourth Republic and which was which coincided with the turn of uh, the country, return of the country back to democratic rule. Nigeria has a very important role she plays in Africa, and that is mostly influenced by her population. Nigeria's population is over 200 million, and the average age of the young Nigerian is 18.4. Nigeria's population is traced is uh, is responsible for 
the diverse ethnic uh, groups that are found in Nigeria. Nigeria has over 490 ethnic groups, and these are widely spread across the landscape of Nigeria. Nigeria is also a very good um, location for foreign nationals. Nigeria has over a million foreign nationals currently within her borders. Nigeria's economy is, so, is majorly driven by oil and oil products. This accounts for 80% of all her gross domestic, domestic product. Um, if you are somebody who would love to travel to Nigeria, you should know that that offers you an opportunity to invest in her uh, in her economy. She has a vibrant population and as well, she has most of her sectors largely underexplored. Nigeria are wonderful people. Prior to this presentation, I sent out a memo to a few of my colleagues and asked them, what do you really want to know about Nigeria? And the very common team that they had were the Nigerians were cultural people. When you hear cultural people, you will assume that there's a single culture that governs the Nigerian people, but that is not so. Nigeria has over 500 ethnic groups and everyone is unique and different in their own way. Nigerians are colorful people and love their familial ties. Nigerians dress in diverse attire. They dress in Agbada, like what I am putting on today. And that is what majorly men and a few um, 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 wealthy people tend to put on to social functions. Nigerians also want you to know that they are hardworking and they are very creative. And uh, this is true when you consider how many people, uh, how um, great um, the people they've produced over the years. Nigerians tend to call themselves the happiest people on it. Um, Talking about hard work, a few Nigerians that you will want and you, you would have heard of, um, maybe you wouldn't have known are Nigerians, are uh, the current World Trade Organization chair. Her name is um, Ngozi okonjo iweala and she currently heads the, uh, the, 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 the World Trade Organization. Also, the wealthiest black man in the world is a Nigerian. His name is Aliko Dangote, and he is known for, um, apart from his business, um, skills, he's also known for his um, effort to eradicating polio and other um, childhood infections. The current world um, heavyweight um, 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 hold, um, title holder is an Nigerian, Anthony Joshua, and you could see him with a tattooed mark of Africa and Nigeria there. Also, we have Nigerians have been able to produce a Nobel laureate. In 1986, Wally Shoenka became the first um, literature um, Nobel laureate from Nigeria. Also, we also have Chimamanda Adichie, the author of the, 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 the book that a lot of people loved a lot, Americana. Also, Nigerians have also played a major role in the discovery and of the current um, um, vaccine that is being used um, Dr. Chid uh, uh, Chidule is from Nigeria and he partnered with other um, scientists in Yale University to come up with the vaccines that are used currently. It is not possible to talk about Nigerians without, talk of, without talking about their love for food. Nigerian, Nigerians love food and Nigeria as a whole is actually home to diverse kind of delicacies. On my, uh, Nigerians are people that um, love to uh, uh, a lot of social functions, they are great girls. Uh, they, they are a lot of they are very gregarious in nature, and when you can't come to a Nigerian occasion without getting spoiled with a few of these delicacies, whether it is eba and a goosey soup, or amala and a wedu soup, or tuo masara and me and kuka. Nigeria is blessed with diverse kind of meals and excellent delicacies. And if you are one who is who love to try different delicacies, I bet you that you will be treated to 
you to, to diverse kind of delicacies whenever you go for a Nigerian occasion. Whenever you come visiting Nigeria, there are a few places that you want to check out. The Yankari Game Reserve is renowned for having what the highest number of elephants in West Africa. So if you want to enjoy your time with in wildlife, you will want to check that out. If you are a lover of history and we want to check out about uh, a bit about the slave history and what happened around the transatlantic slave trade, the Calabar Slave History Museum is a place for you to visit. For those of us who love outdoor activities, sky, uh, uh, who love to go hiking and who love to swim, you will want to check out the Lekki Leisure Park in Lagos. Um, Obudukatu Ranch is also one of them, and it's a place for a lot of relaxation and a, time, a place for retreat for those people who love their private time. Um, on that note, I will love to end my session here. I will be available to answer your questions on Nigeria, and I will be happy if you can drop your question in the comment below. Thank you very much. When you think of sun, sand, sea, the most beautiful attraction. my home country, the Bahamas. I am very, very excited to give you a deep dive and show you a window to the world of the Bahamas. For many years, our islands have had captivated settlers, traders, and invaders. Our shipping channels enchanted pirates who quickly discovered all of our hiding places and it was very fun to them. There are still a lot of tales of treasures When you think of sun, sand, sea, the most beautiful attractions in the world, you think of the Bahamas. Hi, my name is Gazan Taylor, a native from the Bahamas, and a student and Glee ambassador here at Bristol, Kentucky. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to share about my home country, the Bahamas. I am very, very excited to give you a deep dive and show you a window to the world of the Bahamas. For many years, our islands have had captivated settlers, traders, and invaders. Our shipping channels enchanted pirates who quickly discovered all of our hiding places and it was very fun to them. There are still a lot of tales of treasures that I can speak about, but the real treasure is the Bahamian people. In 1492, Christopher Columbus made landfall on San Salvador and we were found. We achieved independence on July 10th, 1973. The Bahamas is an archipelago, which is a chain of islands, and it consists of 700 islands and keys. Our Bahamian flag consists of three colors, which represents a lot to us. Black, which is a strong color and represents the vigor and force of the United People, the Bahamian people. Gold, which represents our beautiful All right, uh, thank you so much. We sorry we're having some technical issues with uh, the Bahamian uh, video. So thank you all so much for uh, your attention tonight. And uh, please keep following our page and uh, keep asking questions below and we will be uh, more than happy to provide answers. Thank you so much and have a good night.